Question 5 might just be the hardest question in the entire sample exam. Uh, it would be even harder if we hadn't done question 3 and 4 first and we were just faced with this absolute monstrosity of a part. Uh, but we can use what we've already done as a basis, so what we've already done as a basis and then modify it slightly uh, to create question 5. And I know that imply, they imply to do this, but uh, in the exam if you do get a part that looks quite complicated like this one, just think about how you can step through it and create simple parts and then more take uh, add on the complexities as you go. It'll make more sense as you start practicing yourself. Okay, so if you haven't tried this question yourself first, I really, really recommend that you pause it and attempt it yourself. Uh, it's not the same if you just follow the video through. I really think that you'd learn more if you just pause it, try it yourself, and if you hit any snags, come back and watch the rest of this video. Uh, yeah, so also just take some time and have a look at the picture. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of different angles, so it's definitely worth spending a bit of time to really understand what how this part really comes together. Okay. Now that I've said that, let's return to the part. Um, pull this to a side. And as we can see, uh, again, we have to change these dimensions, A, B, and C. If you watched the previous video, uh, you would have seen how I used design tables to do this. I really recommend you check that out. So if you haven't already, if you haven't already watched it, go back. Um, you can just modify the dimensions, but I reckon this is pretty cool. So how you'd add a new one is you'd edit the table. Where I am, I'm in the configuration manager. Uh, I've dropped down the tables, and now, come on, and now right-click design tables, edit table. It'll take some time. Updating table, sure. Oh, so I tried to do this previously, so I'll just cancel that to show you how I've done this. Question. I can type in my question 5 with it is 86, 58 and 44 taken from this side of the screen. Great, if I click away it will now create it. Yay! And this is my new part. When we add more features to the part uh, we might have to go back and change the settings for question 3 and 4 but we'll address that issue when we come to it. So how I'm going to approach this problem is by first focusing on this uh, image here. So what I'm going to try and do is create three contours. One, two, and then the third will be the inside of the circle. Uh, and I'll use those contours to create some cut extrudes. Uh, the first one, this contour will create this cut extrude. This contour will create this cut extrude. And then the final, finally, the circle will uh, go all the way through. And we can do that all in one sketch, and I'll show you what I mean. So we can create a new sketch on the outside of this face. Uh, it didn't orientate me automatically, so I'll do the old space bar and normal two trick. And now there's two uh, there's two lines here: one vertical, one horizontal. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, this is uh, 19 millimeters, which is the same as our new line here. So we can assume that this is a continuation of this horizontal, uh, and then the vertical is just an arbitrary distance, 52 millimeters away. So that's easy enough. Uh, so to create the line, we can do the vertical one first, and I'm smart to mention it now. was 52 millimeters and the other one was a continuation of this line yeah. great that should be fine should be fully defined yes it is uh, and now what we're going to do is create a uh, close the loop to do that, we're going to use the Convert Entities tool. So click Convert Entities and follow the contour around. 
you could do select a chain but that'll select the entire uh, the entire perimeter Down. you could just trim it away afterwards but I prefer to do this up to you Convert entities and now we've got this sketch sketch uh, this lines all around so we can use the trim entities tool click drag release across click drag release click drag release and then that's given us these two nice contours should be ready to go uh, nearly forgot we also have to add this circle here to do so just I'm going to hold down control so it doesn't auto auto constrain me to anything and just draw an arbitrary radius yep then I'm going to use my smart dimension and create an 11 mil diameter. Great. Now, just further constraints. Oh, didn't like that. There we go. 14 mil. And again. Fourteen mil. Great. Now my image, uh, my sketch is fully defined again. That's what I wanted. And now the this is the cool part. When you go to sketch and select your features, mine sketch five. Yours should be sketch one. Uh, I've just been practicing a little bit. With uh, so now when we go sketch five, extruded cut. Because there's three closed contours, you can actually uh, select the ones you want. So, which are the contours that I want? Should be this contour. Selected contour, sorry. So, open up down the bottom and get rid of that. And you should be able to choose the contours that you want to yeah, select. So, what I did then, just to consolidate, uh, was I opened up this selected contours originally it was the entire sketch I got rid of the entire sketch and then I chose the two only the two regions that I want to extrude a cut from I can select both of them because they're both 19 millimeters as you can see here and here if they were different lengths you could do them separately uh, but yeah because they're the same, I'm just going to do them in one hit. Uh, so you add in your 19 millimeters and select OK. Hopefully your computer's quicker than mine. Oh, I've only clicked tick. Okay, so it's starting to look a bit more like what we're trying to do. Uh, but as you can see now, this sketch is under this cut extrude. Uh, so. But what SolidWorks does let you do is you can create another cut extrude from the same sketch. So to do so, I'll select this sketch 5, extrude a cut again, and then select a contours, get rid of sketch 5, select the contour that I want. Yep. And now instead of flying, go through all because it goes all the way to the other end. So now when I click tick, it should have a hole go the whole way through. Perfect. That's pretty cool. Now I'll focus on the top two images. Uh, so I'll just drag this across, show you what I mean. These two images. Uh, again, we can see that we've got a contour that we're going to use to create a cut extrude. The only difference between what we're doing now and what we just did is that the cut extrude will be from within inside the part. Uh, there's a number of different ways to overcome this. How I'm going to do it is by creating a, a reference plane uh, 12 millimeters away from the outside and then sketch on that plane and then use that sketch to cut extrude from that plane. Uh, okay, let's see how I did that. So I'll put this back. Dun, 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 dun. And now I want to create a reference uh, reference plane. So go up, go to insert, view, sorry, view, toolbars, and then reference geometry. It should create a new toolbar, toolbar like you can see on mine. 
and then I want to create a plane. So the select plane and it opens up and now I select the back side and I'm gonna flip this. It should be 12 millimeters away from oh yeah 12 millimeters and flipped so it's in the middle here. So that should be fine. Now that I've got this plane I will create a sketch on it, so it's already highlighted, so I go sketch. It didn't automatically uh, realign me, or orientate me, so I'm going to do the old spacebar normal to trick. Uh, did I don't really want that direction, so I can do the same thing, it'll flip me over, which is good. Uh, and now I want to create my contour here. This is relatively easy. I'm going to create a circle which is in line with this vertical and put it roughly where it's trying to get to. Uh, if you drag here you can see that it didn't actually snap to the vertical so to do that I'm going to click the center point, hold down shift and click the vertical and then say make these two coincidence. Now when we click that and try and drag the circle around, it can only go up and down. Uh, so that's exactly what we want, that's perfect. Now before constraining this fixed point, actually although the edge is there, it's not actually touching. Uh, so we need to convert entities again, like we have just done previously. Select, select, select select and I will convert my entities into sketches and then I'll use my trim entities tool to just tidy it up a little bit so I'll trim that edge that edge and the outside great yep that should be fine now I just need to constrain uh, make some smart dimensions this edge here is 36 millimeters from the bottom. Uh, the radius is 41. And actually, that's it. Yeah. So now that we've got a fully defined, fully, def fully defined sketch. All right. I'll exit that sketch. And I will go to Features, Sketch 7 is highlighted. Yours will be a lot lower, hopefully. And I'll create my extruded cut. This is looking a lot like what we're trying to do now. So the extruded cut was, I think it was 24. Yeah, 24, hopefully. 24 millimeters. So we can just change this around, 24. It's already in the right direction, so click OK, cross your fingers, and look at that. Great. So this should mean that we're almost done with question 5. Let's just check that it looks right. And it does look very much like what we're trying to make, which is comforting. Uh, it's still the same steel. We've already changed our key dimensions, so the overall mass. Let's just check that. Our overall mass, again at the top, tools, mass properties, is 628.18. Hopefully you can see that. 628.18 grams. I know the answer is here somewhere. 628.18 grams. Perfect. So hopefully that helped with uh, question five. As I said in the beginning of this video, this question might just be the hardest one. Uh, the next, the next question adds a little bit more complexity to it. But in terms of trying to understand and how to take an, how to attack a question, this might be the most daunting to, for some people. Thanks.